thank you for having me here. Um, thank you, Invensys, and especially Hitma for Im inviting me here. I arrived here yesterday, and I just, I'm really into like coming into your world, and I know nothing about all these uh, instruments. And I'm walking on the on the floor here and see all these instruments and looking at it, and I, I think, what are they doing with it? And I hear all your stories, and I just talked to a few of you, and it's very interesting, and it's really yeah, really a world apart and maybe for you it's the same for the world of internet and social media because everybody uh, uh, has access to it but how can it work for you and how uh, can it boost your sales um, because in the end you want to sell more or higher quality or higher profits so how can you use it in business to business well, I'll, t I'll try to explain uh, uh, parts of the concepts we use for online campaigning and online marketing via social media or whatever online media uh, there is or will be. Um, and my first message is that the sales will start with this. The thing is that if you see this, when I came across this photograph, I was really like, okay, what happened here? This man on steroids, eating an ice cream and burning cars in the back and what happened. And uh, what you create with this, my point is that you create attention. And attention is the first thing in marketing because there's so much out there and everybody is twittering and uh, there's so much communication and everybody's saying like, oh, I'm going crazy, all this information in my head. And as a company, you have to uh, really stand out and you have to uh, be in the picture and this thing is like you when you see this you don't it's not a normal commercial or or so it's just you look at it and it's what happened well this is the first model this model is a real scientific model academic model and it's made in uh, for marketing how people uh, uh, create or make their own attitude. And your attitude is very important for your sales because an attitude towards a product or a brand can eventually uh, lead to uh, an action and that could be uh, a sold product. Well, if you, everyone in this hall, will, has an attitude about a lot of things. And that attitude is uh, built up out of two things. The things and the opinions uh, and the pros and cons you have is within your head to, to a special product or to a person. And you think, okay, um, if we talk about uh, like a photo, photo camera, I think it has these specifications and it's really cool and it has a cool image and I want to, be, uh, I want to have it. But the downside is maybe it's a big photo camera and you want a small photo camera. So that's your opinion. The other uh, part is, is what other people think. And especially people that are relevant to you. So family or friends, uh, or maybe uh, if you're a fan of Steve Jobs and, and you really think he's a thought leader or was a thought leader, then uh, you, you value his opinion too about a product or a brand or whatever he says. Put that together and you've got your uh, opinion and behavioral intention to buy or to uh, to buy a product. Well, and then you have to, you need the actual behavior to, well, to buy the product and for you as a sales, if, if you're sales, to sell that product. And of course, if you want a photograph and uh, you, you, you're planning to buy it next Saturday, but your wife said to you, you have to, uh, to, to go to our son and uh, uh, look at a sports uh, match and you cannot buy the product, okay, then, then it's not sold. So there's not a 100% correlation be between uh, the intention and the behavior. Okay, and now the thing what's relevant for marketing and especially social media is that what your friends think is now very explicit and uh, out there on Facebook, on Twitter, on blogs, on other media. So to influence somebody's uh, uh, opinion about it, about maybe your product, uh, it can be very important to, uh, to share your opinion. The two 
key messages on, on this presentation are that you have to be personal because we all share or we all all, all are persons and we value the opinion of a person more than of a brand and uh, that you should be relevant because if somebody is not interested in a product and don't think anything about it then he will not well will not form an, a specific attitude or behavior with that so personal and relevant this is the same model as i just uh, explained but it's just our daily practice this is people talking about something and stating an opinion and saying, okay, I like this photo camera or uh, did you hear, heard about this? And uh, th that's really the social, the, the real people thing. TomTom Tom is a uh, full service internet company and we build websites and intranets and make online campaigns and online uh, marketing activities. And there are a lot of existing customers or new customers, and they come to us and call us, and they say, okay, uh, I want a new website. Or they say, uh, I want something with social media because that's really hot right now. And then what we think is this. Because we think, oh no, uh, they're focusing on the means, not on the goal. So our question to them is always, what are your business goals? Uh, what is your industry like? What do you want to sell? Uh, and uh, to whom do you want to sell it? And that's the personal thing again. So then we start with them. Um, we've got this, well, rather simple model. Um, their business goal is the action. And in the action, there's it can be like a high target business goal, uh, boosting your sales with uh, so many percent, or uh, uh, it can be as small as uh, download this white paper or uh, buy this online. The first slide I, uh, I've shown to you with the man on steroids eating the ice cream, that's in the first balloon, the biggest balloon, the attention balloon. So the first thing to help you with is getting attention uh, in yeah, the big uh, internet and creating people or getting people to engage with your brand and, and be interested in your story. Well, and if we have got that attention and it can be like the man on steroids, which has nothing to do with your product maybe, or just slightly or, or a little bit, then you've got that attention and then you have to get them in and make a connection in any way, clicking on your website or uh, visiting your Facebook page, because you've got Facebook pages uh, for yourself as a person, but you also got company Facebook pages. I will show you later on uh, some of them. Um, and that interaction is very important. Well, of every balloon, I've got an example. Another attention example is this one. This is a blender company. It's called Blendtec, and it manufactures those blenders. And it was really popular uh, because they made a lot of YouTube videos and it's really a few years old, so it's a classic example. Um, and what they did were, were YouTube videos and they blend anything, everything, an iPad, an iPhone, a Vuvuzela, the, the, the big horn they used with the soccer football in South Africa. They blend everything and try to put it and put it in a YouTube uh, video with like a funny guy in a white uh, a jacket looking like a doctor or something. And they just put it out there and they had one website and it's called willitblend.com with all the YouTube uh, videos on it. And their sales well, skyrocketed to the roof. It was really like, uh, yeah, while well, the message is not buy our blenders, but it was just fun. And Fun is very important because um, if you're on social media, then people have to get them to share your message. Because the, the thing is that you share your message with your peers and they share it with their peers. And then you can easily reach a lot of people. And Lester just gave me a, I think he, he would uh, tell him himself, but he gave me a quote. And it's really like this. It says, if you think you are too small to be effective, 
you have never been in the dark with a mosquito. <laughs> so that's, well, Lester, <laughs> that's the thing. Um, uh, you know, there are a lot of persons, just persons who are famous via the internet because of that social sharing. But as a, 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 a company with like Hitma, it's like 100 years old or something. Well, you can easily ad adapt this and use this for you <coughs> and for your message and for your sales, of course. That was the attention balloon, the connection. Nike, um, well, one of the best known brands in the world. And I would just want to show you some Facebook and Twitter uh, messages about Nike. This is a guy, just to, to, to uh, understand what's happening on uh, these media. This is a guy, Corbin Beckstresser, I don't know him, I just had a search on Nike, and he says, loving the Air Force jersey right now. Well, that's, it's just uh, that he admires uh, Nike and uh, likes his gear. And then you've got this guy, this guy is actually a colleague of mine, and he went to Las Vegas, and he bought He's really a Nike fan, so he bought a lot of stuff. And he just, this was a Facebook post with a picture of it with, well, I think, six pairs or five pairs of shoes, only Nike. But the thing is, if you look at the comments, that uh, like 13 people said, I like this, and when liking it, you're sharing it with their peers too. And uh, they've you've got eight comments on just this picture. So now it's not Nike who is making uh, uh, the commercial, but it's your friend who's making, who's promoting Nike. So that's a very strong effect on uh, branding and how people experience uh, brands. This is a branded Facebook page. This is a Facebook page of Chocomel. It's a chocolate drink in the Netherlands. And if you can see this on the left, this, it says like 40,000 people like this. The like button, if, if you hit the like button, you get messages of their brand in your Facebook. So it's like an email newsletter where they subscribe to. And like 40,000 people, and it, like the Netherlands is a small country, and Chocomel is just one of the, well, a lot of brands, and they got 40,000 people who not, they don't spend them. They said, I like this, and I want to follow you, and I want to see what you, what you tell. Then this, imagine this is your customer. And I don't know if you've got a lot of these, like these customers. What we do if we are starting to making a website or a campaign, we are always like investigating what are your target groups and you have to focus and helping the customer choosing one or two target groups. And then we make personas. Those are uh, fictional uh, characters that represent a target group. And um, because the thing is always, all brands want to send their message. They want send, send, send. And they, they don't think about um, the people who receive that information and what do they really want to know. And the first step is knowing your customer or potential customer. And it's very interesting because, um, uh, because with social media, you can uh, track everything and you can people really let them interact with you so you can learn from them, so you can innovate with them and get feedback over your, about your service or your products. Well, what do we do with her? Uh, want to know her better. So we have some questions. Um, what does she see? Eh? On, on, on what magazines does she read? What car does she have? It always tells something about the person. Pains and gains, so the fears, eh, what she afraid of, that, that, those are all aspects of her personality. And then the, uh, what we try to do is translate that to this. So if that's your, your um, uh, customer, what does she say and do? Say about your brand and does she buy your brand? It's striking that every time we do this, um, our customers are really uh, uh, thinking or discovering new things about their customers, about the customers where we build a website for or make a campaign for. And it's always, 
when you're not thinking about it, you're so prejudiced with these are our customers. So it's, it's really a very good, uh, uh, well, exercise. And I think uh, a key element to get success out of your website and not be just building some, uh, uh, yeah, making a website because you're not way making a website, but you're spreading a message and selling a product. So this is the element about, okay, you have to find the connection between what your customer wants and what you want to send or sell. And that's where the engagement and the sales is. Um, if you can, can find that spot and can hit that spot, then you're in the, in the right position. A lot of, because social media is a lot, a lot of times experienced as a business to, to consumer uh, uh, marketing instrument. Um, this is a graph about uh, the, the content types uh, you can use uh, on websites or blogs or whatever. And what you see is, yes, there are differences between business to business and business to consumer, but they are not so, so big or uh, different. You've got the white papers, the industry white papers or vendor sponsored white papers. Okay, you don't have that in business to consumer marketing. Uh, but white papers are really uh, still a good working content way of getting people to know your brand or interested in your brand. Um, but the thing is maybe like how could your customer or potential customers to read those white papers? You can put it on your website, but maybe you can Twitter about it, tweet about it, and send them via your tweet with a link to that uh, white paper. Or if you don't write, uh, want to uh, write those big white papers, uh, and all your engineers don't want to talk about their business, what I don't think so, because engineers are always very proud, but a bit polite about their, what they do and invent. But then try to get them to tw Twitter, because to tweet, if you, it's, it's just 140 characters, so it's not that big effort, but it can be, have a really big effects. When you're visiting a, a, a website, the, or a Facebook page, it's always designed in a way to, or, or we try to, to let you click on some button or go via a certain flow and end up with an action to buy or download or whatever. Well, this is, well, uh, not so subtle hint, eh? a call to action. Red Bull wants you to like their uh, Facebook page. And if you see how many people like them on the left, it's 22 million. This is one of the top brands in the world with their Facebook page, but 22 million people, that's big. Where would you click? I think most of you would click on the blue button. And that's just because they, there are not many other buttons, but it's, it's, it strikes you. And that's really what we call persuasive design and try to let you click there. This is a website of a, a big energy company in the Netherlands, business to business and business to consumer, and they only sell or mostly online. And what we do is we, uh, we test uh, different versions of the website. We have got this website, and there are just two different versions of a part of that website. Uh, we test how many clicks are on the one version and on the other version. And after like uh, three days, when you have collected enough data, we just put one version on the website. And then we just get their conversion and, and in the end their sales up just by uh, designing and, and, and adapting the website. So that's really tricky business, but that's uh, every time they get 1% extra, 1% extra, and week on week on week, every time that 1%, well, th those are a lot of percents. To get Steve Jobs again, design is not just what it looks like and feels like, but uh, also how it works. And that's very important because when uh, we are uh, designing a website, we always have like a, a company, always have a corporate style. And then we call it the corporate style police because big companies always have a big uh, uh, communication department. And then there's this one guy who is really into the corporate style. And if you just put one pixel in the wrong way, he goes, <laughs> and then, I think this is a message that's really important because you have to make it work for your business. The corporate style is not the goal of your business. I just put the, the, the three balloon model in some perspective. If you see at the red one, that was the traditional model. 
If you see the blue one, that is the uh, attitude and behavior of your customers or potential customers through your media, because uh, at the intention, they have to know your brand. Uh, maybe when they visit your website or Facebook page, they have to click or comment on something. Um, and then the, at the end, uh, you want to download or sell them something. And we've got different means to, uh, uh, to influence that behavior. That those are the black ones. So you got on the left, in the, in the black uh, left circle, uh, social media, campaigns, uh, advertising online, banners, commercials in games um, to influence the attention. And then when you've got that connection and got them on your website or on your Facebook page or on Twitter to uh, uh, have uh, a persuasive design uh, and relevant content, and at the end try to get them to uh, buy your product. I know in business to business, um, selling is not clicking a buy button, and that's more, uh, more personal and a longer process. But this is one of the things, I think, to um, uh, get people to put your brand out there. And like, uh, I think if you are experienced like a thought leader, or uh, you have to, uh, it's, it's part, partly corporate branding, and partly it's, uh, 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 interacting with your customers and getting really leads. Because, okay, we are an internet company and mostly business to business. Uh, we have mostly business to business customers, but we are just tweeted, hey, do you want to talk with us? Because I saw the website you've built out there and uh, can we make an appointment? So that those tweets, we receive those tweets. And that's, that's very interesting and that's business to business. Um, and they've got the yellow uh, balloons, and that's about monitoring and analytics and uh, uh, knowing what's happening out there. And I've got a, a parallel with your business, I think, because uh, I just came up with it, and I think your products are in, well, uh, these sorts of uh, uh, plants. And you've got all these uh, fluids or gases uh, going through those uh, uh, pipes, and you want to monitor them, the temperature, or how fast they go, or how much it is. And uh, I think we are always talking about an online ecosystem. And if you could imagine that like, maybe this is your Facebook page, and this is your website, and this is your Twitter account, and maybe you've got a specialized blog. You want to know how people get to your blog, and maybe from blog to your website, to your Twitter account, and really uh, how they go and how the traffic is going through that online ecosystem. And then the monitoring is very important because you want to know, okay, how much is Twitter about my company? Is it positive? Is it negative? Um, how can we influence it? How can we try to get more traffic to our website? Everything can be measured. And, and I really mean everything. We can measure where your mouse uh, cursor is on a website. Um, we uh, can we know when you click on share on on or on like on a SharePoint or on a, a Facebook page. If you like a branded page on a Facebook a Facebook page, we know your profile because you filled in yourself. How old are you? Uh, uh, where do you live? Uh, are you a male or female? So especially with Facebook. Uh, you, you vary uh, uh, much insight in who are your visitors are. I've mentioned Facebook a couple of times, and um, when you look at the online ecosystem today, it's mostly like, okay, you've got this website, and you're trying with socials to get everybody to your website. But there's really a shift uh, 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 happening, because Facebook is so dominant, you see, this is a picture of the interaction between Facebook and where it's big and how all the uh, people, how they interact with each other. Um, Facebook is like an ecosystem at itself. And the thing is, you cannot sell your products online or convert or download uh, via Twitter. Be but you can via Facebook because you can place your Facebook page, your, your, not your personal page, but your branded corporate page can be a, a sort of website-like uh, system. 
So you've got your website, but your, uh, the Facebook page is, can be, uh, is really next to your website. If you have a Facebook account, okay, that's, that's one. I know not everybody here has a Facebook account, but a lot of people say, okay, it's private to me. It's still private, but it's just you're interested in like that information about a company or what other product. Uh, but the thing is that when we go to customers, we got a, a lot of uh, people are a bit afraid or they're like, especially higher management are uh, uh, a bit like, is this necessary and what can we do with it? And these are typical, quest typical well, questions or, or, or remarks they make. The use of online marketing, online engagement, uh, you can use it for sales, for your general branding, but you can use it for web care. And I know you're not retail, but you, maybe you can service uh, I know a lot of companies we help, they just, you can pose a question to that energy company and five minutes later, via Twitter or via Facebook, and five minutes later, they answer it with the, uh, with the answer to you. And you just put it via Twitter, so you don't pick up the phone and you don't mail them. But the best thing is that those media are for the simple questions and not so personal questions, but they work very fast. So in five minutes, your question has been answered. That's very, uh, 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 and that, that's because they put just people on it, but it's for them very easy to answer those questions. Um, well, public relations may be related to the branding and innovation, I think for you innovation, uh, get feedback about your products and try to know with, with uh, social media monitoring, you really can do deep searches in trends and, and knowing what's all about your business out there on blogs, on, on Twitter, on Facebook, but it, it helps you uh, uh, getting to know your customer and uh, your target group. The do's are that you have to be a person, relevancy, and that's knowing who your customer is, because if you're not relevant and your message is not relevant, then it, it really, uh, you'll you directly know it because you don't get uh, interaction or uh, replies on your information. Focus on your website or whatever you do, focus. It's really important when, uh, when you've got this website and there's too much information that people don't choose and they just are, go away. And it, it's not only on a website, but it's in all of your communication. And the thing that's maybe like as to be, is related to being a person is feel. Uh, we're always like uh, busy with all those strategies and uh, uh, thinking marketing strategies and maybe your business strategy. But I think you have to feel, especially in communication, like an engineer, they, they know what they like and what your customer like. They're engineers too. Or, or, or they're interested in maybe in business goals, but they think that all what's down there on the tables, that they're cool tools. And I think you have to uh, uh, use that um, and start. Because like Astrid said, it's, it's, uh, uh, the social media and internet, it's changing. We've got customers, they said, Jeroen, uh, why didn't you tell that? Or why didn't we build that half a year ago when we started the project? And then I have to say, okay, it wasn't, there yet, it, doesn't, it didn't exist yet in that way. So that's just half a year, it's very fast. But you don't have to stress out or you, you just have to start and monitor what you're doing and what your customers are doing, how the interaction are going and, and act on it. And don't make plans, uh, I think, don't make plans then longer than a year. Maybe three years just on, a, like, on, a, on, a, on, on one uh, paper but no longer than, three, than a year, because it's going so fast. This is a, a Brian Solis, it's, a, a, it's one of the online marketing gurus. And one of his things he said is this, he said, this is all about engagement, like touching people and getting to know with your business and interact with you. So engagement is very important. He's got a book of like 300 pages, it's all about this engagement. But his, what he says is this, engage or die. And he says, engaging between your coworkers, between your customers, and that's where the feeling, are, I think, is really important. So, um, you know when the energy is flowing and when, it's, uh, when people really are uh, touched by your message and want to know more about it. That's it.